Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Zanisar. This is my first video. We are going to today solve the ASCII or ASCII art puzzle in coding game with Python 3. Uh, I'm very new to programming and I was looking for a good video to help me with this and there was none, at least in English, that I could find. So, you know, I solved it, so I figured I'd make a video for my reference, actually, to, you know, come back and consult it in the future if I forget something or need to look up something. But uh, I figured why not put it up on YouTube for the world to see. Uh, so please excuse me if I'm being a rambling idiot at some point. So basically, this problem uh, states that AS, ASCII art allows you to represent forms by using characters to be precise. Uh, characters to be precise in our case. In our case, these forms are words. For example, the word Manhattan could be displayed as follows in follows in ASCII art. So the things that you see basically on traffic stops and in train stations and whatnot. So the problem states that there will be four inputs basically line one would tell you the length of each character so that is this way uh, line two would give you the height of each character and the text would be whatever text you put in that's let's say you put in your name so your name would be the output would be your name with ascii characters looking like this all right uh, and the final input would be the letters A, B, I mean the alphabet basically, A through Z and a question mark in ASCII art. So like this. So these inputs that they are showing 4 and 5, for our purposes, you, they say that L can be from 0 to 30, H can be from 0 to 30, and N can be from you know, 0 to 200. For L and H, we're gonna, this can be pretty much hard coded in, but we're not gonna do that. But because the 4 is basically the length of this letter. So if you go here, that's one character, two characters, three characters, and four characters. Right? So the same thing here, one character, two, three, four. The space after the character is also part of the length of that character. And the five is the height of the character. That's one, sorry, one, two, three. God damn it, three, four, five. All right? So those are fixed. Those are not going to change. If you change them, it's just going to complain and, and whatnot. So basically, if you input 4, 5, and E, that's the T, in this case, the text is E, your output should look like this. So it has to pick up this E. The same thing if you put Manhattan as your text, your text output should be should look like this. Oh, by the way, if you don't know what coding game is, uh, just, you know, maybe at the end of the video, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of you know, demo on what it is and whatnot. So basically this is the code that they give you that comes with the problem. Uh, they're importing the system and math. Um, I don't think we will need any of that. And then they're gonna, the, 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 that's the length input. Again, this, this is the part I said we could if we wanted to hard code it to four, hard code it to five, but we will leave them as they have it. Uh, so, you know, basically an in, in input, you're going to put the 4 in and it'll convert it to integer uh, with the INT. Text input, here goes whatever you want to put in your name, uh, you know, birthday, whatever it is. And then they have this weird thing over here. This is for I in range H row equals input. And then they have a dummy print answer. So this will do nothing right now if we print it. Uh, and, and see it. So if you click that one, this is the console output that comes out and it says answer because you know you're printing just answer and it's supposed to be E basically. Oh, that's the first row of E. So what we're gonna do is I'm not gonna solve it here. I like to test my code as we go. 
So I'm going to solve it in my IDE that uh, I have PyCharm. We're going to solve it on PyCharm. And then we're just going to copy paste the print here and test these cases from here. All right, so let's go over to PyCharm. So here we are on our PyCharm. And, and I just basically copy pasted their code, whatever they had, and removed the print statement from down here and the uh, notes that they had. So let's go ahead and give this a try and see what this row does because, you know, this, this, this seems like it doesn't store this row into anything. It just goes through the, the you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, in this case for h being 5, and just, you know, it gets the row, but it doesn't store into anything. So what does this row do? Let's see, print row, all right? And let's run it. And let's put our inputs for five. Let's say E, and then we're gonna put the ASCII code. I'm gonna copy paste it from uh, from the I'm on my other screen. Copy paste, copying the ASCII art here, there, and then to do that. <clears throat> All right. So this row, if we print it out, it basically is this thing. This, this white thing is the printout, but it's basically that highlighted line because what is what is what this is doing is this is going I, I is going from 0 to 4 so h being 5 because range h is 0 1 2 3 4 uh, you know you, that, that's the basics of Python I'm not going to get into that right now so so i equals 0 it goes through that line it reads that line as row great then i equals 1 it reads that line and i equals 2 does that line, i equals 3 does that line, i equals 4 does that line, and then prints out that i equals 4. It, it's not storing anything anywhere. So let's store it in a list. It, it's it's easy, easier to iterate through or, or loop through a list. So let's create a list called rows. And we're going to start with a blank one, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put these rows into our, I mean, this row into our rows list. Now let's print out this rows list and see what it does. We have to do this every time this annoying input, we're not, although we're not using that. So there you go. Now we have the, the, the rows is a list that has all these rows. So first row is the first item. As you can see, it's a string and the second row is a second item and so on and so forth. So what we have to do right now is loop through and and pick up the characters where they are so our starting index for e would be here right so what is the starting index here if we were to go to the first first line for row, our starting index for e would be uh looks like this one right so this one this 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 little character so this would be because the white spaces are a character too it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Sixteenth index in that first item or first item in the or first row would be for E. Okay, so we have to somehow get to that. How do we get to that? So think about it. The, the, the L is 4, right? Our length is 4. For each character, length is 4. So for the first character, if we pick 1 times 4, we are picking, actually, no, hold on a second, because this has to be 4 times 4, so it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is the, yeah, so, if we were to pick this one, it has to be 0, so, right, so that's the 0th index, if we consider a is the zeroth index character, then 0 times 4 equals 0, we pick a. And for b, it's the index is 1, so 1 times 4 equals 4, and we should be able to pick this one. Let's see, 1, 2, sorry, 1, 2, three, sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, it's, it's late at night over here, guys, so bear with me, please. Uh, okay, so, so we know how to get to each character starting. All we have to do is find out that character's uh, index and multiply that with that L, right? So how do we find each character's index? For that, what we can do is just, just uh, I don't know, 
let me give you a little bit of idea of this. If I were to print, let's say, ORD, I don't, this is the UTF-8 character index, I think, for each of these characters, or ASCII character index for each of these characters. So ORD of A, right, I'm going to comment this out for a second. ORD of A would be, oh, I think we have to do this crap. ORD of A is 97, right? What is ORD of E? Order of E is, let's do this again, uh, order of E is 101. J just remember, I have to put these inputs in every time I'm running this program. You, 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 it doesn't matter what I'm putting in as long as I'm covering all of this. They, they don't have an impact on this number right now. So order of E is 101 and order of A was, uh, as we saw, 97. So order of E minus order of A is 4. Okay, so we get that 4 to multiply to this 4 to get to that 16 and come here, right? So this will work for any number. If, if you were to pick for, let's say, f, right, order of f is, <coughs> uh, yeah, and I'm pasting this so we can, we can refer, to, uh, I did that wrong. Okay, let me stop it, run it again, and 4, 5, e. There. All right. Order of f is 102. So 102 minus 100. Uh, what is that? Order of a is 97. So that's 5, right? 5 times 4 would be 20. Let's see if we do go to 20 if we can find f. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There you go. So we have now a way to come to the first index or starting index of every character. All we have to do is subtract the ord of A from the ord of that character that's mentioned, right? So what we can do is we can then for each character, so we can go for character in T because that's where we're putting the, our, our text, right? So for character in T, if we do, we have to define that variable, the multiplier, the, to multiply the L with, we will do X equals, oh no, let's see, if character equals, eh, what I can do, probably do this, word A, less than equals character less than equals word z okay huh that's interesting so if, if this doesn't work maybe we just do if character <coughs> is greater than equals a and character uh, oh why did I do that I don't know this will work I'm sorry my bad uh, so we're gonna do if a less than equals character less than equals Z so that means the character is between a a and Z inclusive of a and Z if it's between a and Z then our multiplier we can call it x, we can call it multiplier, whatever. Our x would be the ord of the character minus the ord of a. As we said, to come to the first index, we would subtract the ord of a from ord of the character, whatever character is given. So now if we have multiple characters, it's going to loop through each character. Let's say I have my name written over here, Zanisar, and it will go to Z and do this, and then it will go to A and do the same thing, and so forth and so on, right? Now, to cover the upper cases, because it can be upper or lower case, we can do this with uppercase. Now, the ord of A for lowercase is not the same as ord of A for uppercase, okay? then those numbers would be different. But the difference would be the same. You can try it out yourself. It's, it, it's going to be the same. Uh, so we're going to do uppercase Z. If it's between that, then our X would be 
word of uppercase Z, no, sorry, uppercase, not uppercase, character, minus word of A. Else, if it's not, if it's a character not in the alphabet, then according to the original problem statement, we have to pick this question mark over here. So we can, uh, this should be LF. There you go. Else, if it's not any of this, then basically how do we get to the question mark? We can do x equals word z minus word a, which will give us how much? Which will give us 25. But 25 is z's number, right? So if we do 25 times 4, we come to this one. To come to this one, we have to do 26 times 4. So all we can do is we can add a 1 over here. And that's it. What else do we need to do? So now we found a way to do the multiplier. Now we have to loop through and find a way to move forward. So we found the starting index. Then we have to go forward. And then after we have picked this first row, we have to come down to the second row and the third, fourth, fifth. So to come down, we should be looping through the H, right? Yeah. And the H, that should be, this should all be inside of that loop because it's going to do the same thing for the first row and then it's going to do all of this for the second row and all of this for the third row and so on and so forth. So let's wrap this up in, uh, what can we say, I? Yeah, sure. I in range H and then we're going to bring this up and done. There you go. So, yeah, and then, okay, so now we have a way that, okay, we're, we're going through, we're coming to that first row, when i equals 0, we're keeping picking this starting index. Now, to move forward from this starting index, what else do we need to do? We need to go forward one by one, and that we can do with the L, right, because L is 4, and so if we do range L, we go 0, 1, 2, 3, there you go, that covers it, so we can do four, say J in, let me just give it a well, space, for J in range L, what are we going to do? We are going to, now, now it's time to print. We, we need to print out what we need to show, right? So what are we going to print? We're going to go through the first row. How do we pick the first row and second row and all of that? by the rows i, all right? What happened to my other thing? Okay, so the rows i for j equals zero, for i equals zero, it's going to go to the first row. And then in the first row, we're going to have to pick these. So how do we pick those? Actually, not these, these plus the space. So we can come to the index, and here we can do our the multiplier times l. So multipliers times L, so if it's the E, well, I'm taking the E as an example, it would be, as we know, X would be 4, L would be 4, so it would be 16. So it picks the 16, right? And then to move it forward once, we can add the J to it. So what happens here, your J is initially 0, so this would be 16, right? 16 plus 0 is 0, 16, so it will pick this one. Then it will go back for j equals 1. So j equals 1 would make this 17. It will pick, pick this. j equals 2. It will be 18. It will pick this. j equals 3. It will be 19. And it will pick this. So 16, 17, 18, 19. All right. So we got that done. Now, one thing is in Python, I don't know uh, if you guys know, it, the, the there is a, for print statement, there is an automatic <coughs> end statement like this thing, that is always a new line, okay? That is always a new line. So basically what that does is it's going to pick this 
character, then it's going to start a new line and, and put this character underneath it and this character under it and that character under it. We don't want that. We want it side by side. So to do that, we're going to just do that. And that will print them side by side. And then after the first row is done, we want to print underneath. We don't want to print side by side anymore. So for this, we're going to come out here under this for loop because that, that's related to the i in range h. Once it's done looping once, then we want the second row to be under. So we're going to do print that. And that, and I'm going to get rid of all of that. And that guys should do it. That that should do it. Let's let's run it and try it out, right? So, huh? Wow. Okay. What's happening here? And what did I do? What did I do with like? Oh, okay. I I don't know why is there a dot there. I didn't like it. So we're gonna go four five e, and then we're gonna paste this over and see. Ah, there you go. There's e. Now let's try a couple other things here. Uh. About uh, four, five, and my name. And my name with maybe uppercase, lowercase, mix up everything. Ah, there you go. Z A N E S A R. How about characters outside of the, so let's say men, and uh, T T N, whatever. Right, so I have, and uh, I'm gonna actually put an asterisk over there too. Okay, so let's see what does this do. M, A, N, and then for these it should be going to the question mark. That looks like this. It has question mark, question mark, question mark, T, T, question mark. Perfect. This seems like this works perfectly. So now we're gonna just copy paste this over to our. Uh, code in game thing and see if it works. We're gonna run their tests. Let's go over there. All right, so we're back here on our code in game uh, interface and I have already copied the code that we did on my clipboard. So we're just gonna copy paste it over here and we're going to run our tests. So let's see, run the E. Oh, that's Ben Adam, that's not the first one. So that, that's the first one, what is happening here? Okay. So it says it's a success, we get the E, we get the Manhattan, we got this Manhattan, it works. Uh, we got this Manhattan with the question marks for the ads, works. Ooh, this is nice, I don't know what that is, but that's nice, But and that works. And test Manhattan with that, works. So that's it guys, we conquered it, we conquered coding game ASCII art. Thing. I don't know which one I'm gonna tackle next, but the videos, uh, you know, again, as I said, these are basically for my reference to go back. I'm just putting it out there for if, if it helps anybody, that's great. If it's not, uh, it still helps me. Uh, so don't wait for the videos. I will make one whenever I have time. Basically, there is no schedule. So maybe some week there will be three, four videos. Some weeks there may not be any. Sorry about that. Uh, if, 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 if it gets enough traction someday, maybe I'll, I'll do scheduled video. For, but for now, it's just going to be infrequent. So don't hold your breath. But if you like the video, I would appreciate a you know, like button, press, click, whatever they say. So thank you again for watching.